How's it going, guys? Joxel here with another video, and I believe it's either day 14 or 15 of the 50K to 100 day challenge. Uh, so if you don't know, Nicole Young and I decided to start a challenge where we challenge ourselves to start a business and make 50 grand in 100 days. So uh, this is another video in that series. Um, and in this particular video, I'm going to be explaining the process that we went through to register our business and make it legit um, and the reason why we chose to go with an LLC. So imagine you're grinding in your side hustle. And let's say you're even making some good money. You go check the mail one day and you see a letter. It's from the IRS. You immediately decide to open it and inside you reveal a letter requesting additional documents and information to aid in the examining of your financial accounts. Congrats, you're being audited. Many of you probably have a side hustle. Some of you probably even make good money doing it. But a lot of you probably haven't legitimized your business, at least not in the government's eyes. And that can leave you at risk of being audited by the IRS or facing other legal issues. If you weren't already aware, I'm currently in a 100-day challenge to make $50,000 from a side hustle. It won't stay that way forever, though, especially if this challenge is a success. So we decided to legitimize our business and, in a way, our obligation to it. Here's a quick fact. A Zapier survey shows that 34% of Americans have a side hustle, and 24% of Americans plan to start one within the next year. Why? Because we all need money. More money than the average wage provides, whether that's to make ends meet, go on dates, or put away cash you otherwise wouldn't have to pay off student loans or put a down payment on a house. Regardless, technically, if you make more than $600 in a year from any other source other than your main job, you're supposed to report it as additional income. The thing is, many of us don't do that. Do you know what else many people don't do? Protect themselves from liability if a gig goes wrong. Imagine for a moment you're an artist who knows their way around an iPad or Adobe Illustrator. You decide to market yourself as a graphic designer and make some extra cash. One day, a project you're working on goes wrong, and the client you were serving decides to serve you with a lawsuit. Let's say they're claiming damages from mistakes and oversights on your part. Regardless of how likely they are to win that suit, everything you own is at risk without a business entity or a tax classification protecting you from liability. That includes your car, your home, any life savings you have. Sounds crazy, right? It's easy to think that way until it happens to you. But don't worry, there's a way to protect yourself while also adding a little bit of street cred to the work you're completing. So there are a few different types of business entities and tax classifications. For this video, I'm going to focus on the LLC or the limited liability company. It's one of the more common and versatile types that suit a lot of industries and ultimately is what Nicole and I decided on for our business. A limited liability company is a business structure and a legal status. The designation relieves business owners from personal responsibility for a company's debts or liabilities. That lawsuit situation I mentioned earlier, this status would separate you from the business running your side hustle. And as a result, it would protect your assets from the lawsuit. LLCs are pretty versatile designations because they can have one or multiple owners, commonly referred to as members. In our case, Umber Society LLC is a multi-member LLC, with Nicole and myself as the members. If you're the sole owner, it would be considered a single-member LLC. Another trait of an LLC is how you handle taxes. Under an LLC, taxes are passed through to the owners and treated as personal income, making taxes a lot more straightforward for Nicole and I at the end of the year. We would file our taxes like usual while reporting our earnings from Umber as additional income. The last two benefits that led to our decision were related to like business expenses and deductions. You probably heard before that business owners can write things off as a business expense. Most recurring operating costs and necessary equipment purchases or software licensing are tax deductible. Like profits is divided amongst the owners depending on the percentage of ownership. In our case, Nicole and I own Umber Society 50-50, so the tax deductions would be split in half. I also look forward to benefiting from capital expenditure deductions. Think write-offs for more considerable assets that the business will benefit from for over a year. The key word here is assets. Capital deductions incur when a company spends money, uses collateral, or takes on debt to either buy a new asset or increase the value of an existing asset. An example of this would be like if Umber Society bought a condo or an office space instead of leasing one. We can take deductions from investments like that. However, with all my research, I discovered a complication that I feel like was sort of unique to our situation. Nicole and I live in two separate states and work out of our apartments. Neither of us wanted to use our addresses as the primary business address for privacy reasons, and we'd likely end up moving in a few years anyway. In addition to that, working in different states introduced the topic of foreign qualification. Well, let me explain. Solving the address issue was easy. We decided we use a registered agent. Basically, they're a third party, a company, or individual that acts as the point of contact between the business and the state or any related processes. 
The service we chose to follow through actually included a registered agent for free for the first year. So what does foreign qualification mean? It's when a company conducts business outside of the state that is registered in. We registered Umber Society in Washington, DC, and all of our business is online meaning transactions are likely to originate from all over the United States and hopefully the world. The problem is if a state decides that our services online count as doing business within it, we would be required by the state to register the company as a foreign company within the state and pay any taxes or fees associated with that. So I ended up digging through dozens of articles, documents, and even went as far as reading into the state regulations between D.C. and Pennsylvania to verify whether or not we would be at any significant risk of this. I've concluded that we'll be fine. However, advisors recommend seeking advice from a tax consultant just to make sure you don't incur any hefty fines for making the wrong choice. I plan to do so later. I listed a few reasons why starting an LLC made sense for Umber Society. Even with the information I've shared, I'd still recommend you do your research to figure out if that decision makes sense for you. I'm not a tax advisor, um, but you understand what an LLC is now, you know what the benefits are, and you know why Nicole and I decided to go that route for Umber Society. So go and legitimize your side hustles. Become small business owners because we need more people like us out here grinding and building within our communities. Another thing, don't forget to consider Umber Society when you're looking for consulting around branding, strategy, or business technology. We started this company to help you, and thus our community, level the playing field and encourage you all to continue to dream, design, and develop. Thanks for watching. I hope you continue to follow our journey. Definitely check out Nicole's channel for her side of the story and her updates on everything. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok if you want to see more behind the scenes content and some day-to-day -day updates. One more shameless plug. We got our blog up and running on our website. Check out umbersociety.com. The link will be in the description. And if you want to read the articles that we've been writing just about our process, we kind of use it as a jumping off point for some of this content. And we want to use it as a, another medium to kind of journal about our experience throughout this whole process. So definitely check that out if you're interested. But otherwise, if you know anybody who would be interested in this kind of information, please share it. We would really appreciate it. And thanks for watching.